Hi, I'm Heather. Welcome to class. Today we're going to work on lengthening the muscles on our front thighs, the quadriceps, as well as the hip flexors. And we'll be working on Virabhadrasana 1, lunging poses, as well as Ustrasana, the camel pose. Before we begin, if you find this video helpful, be sure to like and subscribe. Hit the bell so you're notified when a new video is available. Let's start facing the narrow end of the mat. Two bricks, one for each hand. Step the right foot forward and as you come into a lunge, place your bricks on either sides of the right foot. And when you stack your right knee vertically top the ankle, then Toes tucked under on the left foot and take your left knee as far back as you can manage. Still with the right knee vertically top the ankle, but this distance between right heel and left knee is going to encourage that opening through the hip flexors, muscles that attach the thigh to the torso. We have our hands on our bricks. We're drawing the chest forward, pressing the shoulder tips back towards the hips. And with the toes tucked under on the back foot, we're ready to straighten the back leg. Before we do, internally rotate this left thigh. So the inner thigh is rolling up towards the ceiling. Slowly then straighten the back leg. Press the left shin bone up towards the ceiling and go on internally rotating that thigh. Still the breastbone lengthens forward, shoulder tips press back. Then place the knee back to the floor. We're going to bring this right heel in closer to the left knee. So that again, as we lunge, now the knee goes beyond the line of the ankle. I'll move my bricks so you can see that more clearly. The knee goes beyond the line of the ankle and I'm gonna lengthen the toes onto the floor. So the front foot, the toenails on the floor and I'm still wanting to lean forward. Now here, if the Achilles is tight, or the calf muscles tight, your heel might lift up and the knee might be problematic. It might not flexing so deeply. So you may need to come out of the lunge a little, creep the, the right foot further forward, and then again, come forward into your lunge. And as you do that, you'll notice that the left hip lags behind and the right hip moves forward. See if you can keep that internal rotation of the left thigh so that Outer right hip can draw back, outer left hip can move forward. And again, we're getting this magnificent stretch through the hip flexors, the muscles on the upper left thigh. Let's take the arms out and up and lift the back ribs away from the back of the pelvis. Try not to shrink in this um, kidney, lower rib, lumbar region. We will be curved, we will be arched there. So yes, we wanna move the tailbone down and the navel up, but we also wanna use the lift of the arms to enhance the lift of the back ribs. Contain the front ribs. Let's release the arms out and down and we'll place our hands on our bricks, come out of our lunge and we'll sit back in Vajrasana, the thunderbolt pose for a moment of reprieve, allowing our thighs to relax. And then as you're ready, let's come forward again, but this time left foot forward. So we come up and we step the left foot forward. And as we lunge, this time we're ensuring the knee is vertically top the ankle. Place your hands on your bricks and tuck the right toes under. And so then you can potentially walk that right knee further and further back, still with the left knee vertically top the ankle, so that you are magnifying the length on the upper right thigh. Internally rotate the right leg, so this inner right thigh rolls up towards the ceiling, the outer right hip moves forward. And keep the breastbone lengthening forward as you slowly straighten the back leg. Press the right shin bone up and don't shrink the breastbone. 
Keep the breastbone lengthening forward, shoulder tips back towards your hips, strong work in both legs as the right shin presses up, the right thigh is working strongly. Let's place the knee back to the floor and then we'll slip this left foot in a little closer to the right knee. So I'll move my bricks forward, then you can see. I bring that foot in a little closer. So then when I come into a lunge, I'll point my right toes back, so the front of the foot, the metatarsals, the toenails are on the floor, and then I'll lean forward, allowing this knee to be deeply flexed if the knee is willing. And I still want the heel down. So if there's tightness here, your heel might lift. You may need to come out of the lunge and creep that foot further forward. Lunge as deeply as you can. And you'll notice the further forward you go, the more that left hip moves forward and the right hip rolls back. So that's where we want to put the brakes on. We want to hold the hips, hold the femur bones, thigh bones, into the pelvis. And as you internally rotate this right thigh, move the outer right hip forward, outer left hip back. Then draw the tailbone down, navel up, inhale your arms up and lift the back ribs away from the back of the pelvis and go on driving the right shin down. Right shin presses down to help you move the right hip forward. Then to come out of the pose, lower the arms, you can reach your hands to your bricks, move your hips back and then we'll come into Vajrasana, the thunderbolt pose to rest the thighs. For the next pose, we're going to use a chair and a bolster. Now, if you don't have a yoga chair, we're going to be using this open space by stepping one foot through. Uh, if you can't do that, then it is possible that you can use a chair like this so that your thigh is on the chair seat. That's what we're looking for. But if you do have a yoga chair, let's step the right foot through. We've got this bolster here ready for the left knee to come down onto. So I'll stand to the left side of my chair, step the right foot through, sit down and bring the calf right into the chair back so that the length of the thigh is supported on the chair seat. And then I can stride the left leg back and settle the knee into the bolster. Now it's likely there'll be a little bit of lopsidedness here. We might be turning to the left. And with the chair support, we're gonna move that outer left hip forward. So we can use our hand on the chair, right hand on the chair, outer left hip forward, pull with your hand. So the chest, yes, we can get the chest square to the front of the chair, but what about the hips? Move that outer left hip more and more forward and feed the right thigh bone into the pelvis as that outer right hip moves back. Press the hands to the, to the top of the chair and lift the navel up, keep the front pelvic bones lifted and slowly we straighten the back leg. So we're moving into Virabhadrasana 1. As you straighten the back leg, press the shin bone up strongly, internally rotate the left thigh so that outer left hip can keep moving forward. And work this right leg, push into the foot as if you're trying to lift yourself up off the chair. And then lower the knee, take a moment of reprieve. The second time we straighten this back leg, we'll stretch the arms up for the full pose. So push into the right foot, Get some activation in this right thigh and as you straighten the back leg, move the outer left hip forward, press the shin bone up, zip the navel up and then we'll take the arms up. Virabhadrasana one with the back heel lifted. And then we lower the arms, lower the left knee, let's swap legs. So we step the right foot out, stand on the right side of your chair Step the left leg through and sit down. So you're bringing the calf right into the chair so that the majority of the length of the thigh is supported on the chair seat. 
and then you've got room enough to take this right knee down onto the bolster. Now I didn't say this when we were stepping the right foot through. If your chair is taller, your shin bones is shorter than mine, perhaps you need to put a brick underneath your standing foot. But as we set ourselves here, we're wanting to roll the outer right hip forward and feed the femur bone into the pelvis so there's this capacity to level the pelvic bones to the chair. Now we might not get them completely level. I can feel my right pelvic bone is behind the level of the left and that's something I'm working on. So we're internally rotating the right thigh, press the hands to the chair, zip the navel up, lift the sternum and then slowly straighten the back leg. Remember you're pushing into the left foot as if you want to lift yourself up off the chair seat. And then as you're working this back leg strong and straight, again there's this internal rotation of the thigh bone so the outer right hip can move forward. So go on feeding this left thigh bone back into the pelvis, outer left hip draws back. And then come down, knee to the bolster, take a moment here. Now let's go again, press into the left foot, to start to activate this left thigh, slowly straighten the back leg. Move the left hip back, right hip forward, and then let's take the arms up. So as you lift the arms up, move the tailbone down, pubis to navel up, and contain the front ribs. So you're not just flaring the front ribs and digging the back ribs in. Lift the back ribs as you contain the front ribs. And then lower the arms, lower the right knee. Step the left foot forward and take a moment to rest here. For the next variation of Virabhadrasana 1, we're going to take our mat to the wall, use one brick and one long belt. Let's take the narrow end of the mat into the wall and put the brick down for a moment. You'll use a very small loop around the left ankle. As you have your belt around the left ankle, have the buckle at the back so the tail of the belt is away from you. Hold on to the belt with your left hand and the brick with your right hand. Step the right foot forward so close to the wall that when you bend your knee and you stack your knee vertically top the ankle, your knee presses into the blade shaped brick against the wall. Keeping the brick wedged there, we hop the left leg back further and further so that our right thigh comes more and more parallel to the floor. We're feeding this right femur bone back into the pelvis, drawing the outer right hip back. We're internally rotating the left thigh so the outer left hip moves towards the wall. And then with our belt, we're going to hold the belt, slide the hands up, until we straighten the arms. Now as we straighten the arms, we're going to use this to lift the back ribs away from the pelvis. And if it's helpful for you, you might want to lean forward to get that feeling of lengthening the lower back more, lifting the back ribs well away from the pelvis and go on drawing your tailbone down, pubis to navel up. And then to come out of the pose, you can release your belt, hold your brick, straighten the right leg and step out of the pose. Let's swap our legs. We put our belt around the right ankle. Make sure the tail is behind you. Hold your brick with your left hand. Step the left foot forward close enough to the wall that when you bend the knee and you press your knee to the brick, your knee is vertically top the ankle. Then as you hop the right leg back, you slide the foot further back, bring your thigh more and more parallel to the floor, but then can you feed this left thigh bone into the pelvis more as the outer right hip moves forward towards the wall. Internally rotate the right thigh. Hold your belt and then 
stretch the arms up, pull on the belt in such a way that you're lifting the back ribs away from the pelvis. And then at the same time, when you press your right shin bone up, can you draw the front pelvic bones up, pubis to navel up. Then to come out of the pose, bend your arms, release your belt, catch your brick, straighten the right leg and step out of the pose. Now for the next pose, I'm using a chair. I'm basically going to use the front edge of the seat as a chair and two bricks. I've got a couple of blankets just for padding. So one blanket can go over the front of the seat. The other blanket can be flat on the floor, just in front of the chair legs. So if I start standing on the floor in front of my blanket, I'm gonna bend the knees, reach the hands down to the bricks and step the right foot onto the chair. And then I'm sliding the front foot along the front of the chair to bring my right knee to the floor. Stepping that left foot further forward so that when I come up, my left knee is vertically top the ankle. I'm getting a stretch in the quadriceps and potentially the knee is vertically underneath the hip, depending on how uh, supple you are in the quads. Now commonly what happens here is the outer left hip lifts up, the left waist shortens because of tightness in the front right thigh. So let's do our best to roll the outer left hip down. So if you put your hands on the top of the pelvis, you should feel that both sides of the pelvis are level. Draw the navel up. Let's interlock the fingers. Inhale the arms up. Stretch the side waist upwards, side ribs upwards. Open the armpit chest, the shoulders, and exhale the arms down. Then lean into your bricks and creep the left foot a little further forward so that you can come into a lunge. Remember, we want to keep this heel down like we did earlier. So you're lunging deeply, provided your knee allows that level of flexion. And go on rolling the outer right hip forward. Then let's sweep the arms out and up. Lift the back ribs up. And if your back is willing, we can start to arch back, reach the hands back. Look up. Press the front foot into the chair to move the right hip forward. And then straighten your back, pull the hips back, lower the arms. And we'll lean into our bricks to step out of the pose. So you can bring that left foot next to the front of the mat, step forward, the right foot, then bend the knees, take the front of the left foot onto the seat, and then lower the left knee to the floor. Take the right foot further forward, so that when you come up, your knee is vertically top the ankle, and ideally your left knee is vertically underneath your left hip. Now place your hands on the top of the pelvis into the waist so that you can feel, is there a discrepancy in the level of the pelvis right to left? Can you roll that outer right hip down even though you're challenging the front of the left thigh? Chest lifted, navel lifted. Let's interlock the opposite index finger on top. Inhale your arms up, press up through the knuckles, squeeze the elbow tips in, and lift the entire circumference of the rib cage well away from the pelvis. Lower the arms and lean forward into your breaks. We're gonna lunge further forward, so it will be helpful to creep this right foot further forward. Bend the knee more deeply. So you're allowing this knee to be in a deep flexion. And just watch how this left hip might want to drag back. Can you move the outer left hip forward more and more? And then we'll take the arms up. So as you stretch the arms up, use that to lift the back ribs well away from 
the pelvis and press the front left foot into the chair to move the left hip further forward. Then see if you can arch back. Take the arms back, look up with the sternum. Go on moving the pelvis forward, tailbone down. And then come back up, lower the arms, hands to your bricks. And step the right foot in closer to the blanket. Step the left foot forward and come to stand up. Now, we came into that by leaning onto the bricks. And I thought it would be fun to challenge our balance and our capacity to simply stride the foot back onto the chair, lower the knee to the floor and stride to stand up again without referring our hands to the bricks. And of course, if you need to, you can place your hands on the bricks. Hands on the waist, always know the bricks are there if you need them. Inhale, bend the knees as you exhale, and we stride the right foot back. Find the chair with the front of the foot and bend your knees deeply, right knee down. So this left knee is significantly flexed. Inhale, exhale, lean forward, push into the chair with the front of the right foot, and then stand up, step your right foot to the floor next to the left. Inhale, bend your knees as you exhale, and take your left foot on to the front of the chair. Slowly lower your left knee to the floor, see if you can control your descent. And then we come up, inhale, lean forward as you exhale, press into the front of the seat with your left foot and then stand up and step your left foot next to the right. Let's do it again, inhale, bend your knees as you exhale, right foot onto the front of the chair, come down, right knee to the floor, inhale, exhale, lean forward and stand all the way up. Left leg, inhale, bend your knees, left foot to the front of the chair and slowly come down all the way to the floor. Inhale and lean forward as you exhale and stand up. Let's do one more repetition with the arms up. Inhale, arms up, bend the knees as you exhale, find the chair with the right foot, slowly come down right knee to the floor. Inhale, lean forward enough that as you exhale, you can come to stand all the way up. Keep the arms up, inhale, exhale, bend the knees, find the chair with the uh, left foot and come all the way down, left knee to the floor. Inhale, lean forward as you exhale, all the way up and lower the arms. Now I kept my mat against the wall for the last couple of poses. We're going to use the wall for Ustrasana. Having done a lot of work on lengthening the front thighs, the hip flexors, uh, and then we're going to start to arch back using that length. So you may want a blanket as padding for the knees and the shins. Bring that right into the wall and we'll come down onto the knees, knees hip width apart, bring your thighs right into the wall. And let's start with the toes tucked under. Now, this space here, the hip flexor region, we wanna lengthen as we press the thighs to the wall, lift the front pelvic bones up. It's common that when we tuck the toes under, the pelvis starts to tilt forward. So we've gotta do our best to lift the front pelvic bones up against that. Use your hands, press your hands onto your buttocks, press the buttocks forward and lengthen your tailbone down. As you start to arch back, keep pressing your hands into your buttocks and reach your right hand back. Can you find your heel? And take the left fingertips onto the wall in front of you. There, may, there, there would be a slight um, twist in your thoracic spine, but keep your pelvis level against the wall. And then let's come up, we'll swap hands. So again, press your hands into your buttocks, both hips and thighs to the wall, reach your left hand back to your heel, reach the right fingertips up the wall. 
Go on pressing both thighs, both hips to the wall evenly. Try not to take the left hip off the wall. And then come up and we'll sit back on the heels for a moment. Have a rest. It's possible that some may not be able to reach their heels, even with the toes curled under. In which case, you could potentially try a bolster over the ankles and the heels. And of course, it can be done with the uh, toes tucked under. So you're adding even more height to that. So if we're working with our bolster, we'd still be pressing the outer hips towards the wall, reaching our hands back and working this way in Ustrasana. For those who can manage without the bolster, let's do with the toes pointed back if possible. If not, go again with your toes tucked under. Knees and feet hip width apart. Take your hands to your buttocks. Press the buttocks forward. Keep the outer hips moving towards the wall, tailbone down. Lift the navel up as you arch back. Keep your thighs in contact with the wall as much as you can. Reach your hands back to your heels. One hand at a time is fine. And if you find that your thighs come off the wall in an effort to reach your heels, can you reinstigate the contact? Press the hips forward, outer hips to the wall. Shoulder tips are pressing back, but don't pinch between the shoulder blades. Let there be some space there. Head can go back. Thighs to the wall. and then come up and sit back down to rest for a moment. We're going to do one more variation of Ustrasana and this is fantastic at strengthening the thighs. Let's use our bricks to start. If we start in Vajrasana, but you can take the knees and feet a little apart. See if you can track the shin bones so they're parallel to each other. Have your bricks on either sides of your feet and if it's difficult for you to reach your hands back to your heels for the full pose or strasana, then perhaps you can consider taking your bricks higher. Do note that they are quite wobbly as they get higher. Take your hands so the fingers point down towards the floor on the back end of your bricks. Drive the shins down, the front feet down, to then lift your hips up, take the head back as you press the hips forward. Lift the sides of the chest up and roll the outer hips forward as you go on driving the shin bones down. Then raise yourself all the way up and come back to sit. Now, if you think you can do without the bricks, put the bricks aside and we'll reach the hands to the heels. Start with the fingertips on the floor because you're sitting on the heels, you need to start with the fingertips on the floor. As soon as we lift the hips, we'll then bring the hands onto the heels. Inhale. Press your hips forward, reach your hands to your heels. Keep pressing the hips forward as you drive your shins down, front feet down. Throw the head back. Feel the trapezius muscles are creating a pillow for the head. Shoulder tips back, but don't pinch between the shoulder blades. Go on driving the front shins down, front feet down. Grip the hamstring muscles as you press your hips forward. And then come up all the way. Settle the buttocks down. Pause here, have a rest. And we'll do one more Ustrasana like that. Knees and feet hip width apart. Start with your fingertips pointing back or use your bricks under your hands. Inhale. Press the shins down as you exhale, lift up, take your hands onto your heels, press the hips forward, move the outer hips forward as you throw the head back. The thoracic spine that's between your shoulder blades lifts up into the sternum. Steady your breath. Quieten your facial muscles. 
and then we can raise ourselves up, come all the way up, sit the buttocks down. We'll do a brief spinal twist to help release the back. Take one of your bricks, put that to the right side, shift your right buttock onto the brick, cross your left ankle onto the arch of the right foot. Bharadvajasana, twist to the right. Roll the outer left hip down. Come back through the center. Lift your right hip off the brick through Vajrasana. Take your brick across to the left side and place your left buttock on your brick, right ankle onto the arch of the left foot. Keep the outer right hip down, twist to the left. Try not to shorten the left side of the neck. Can you keep both sides of the neck the same length as you turn the head? And come back to center, remove your brick, and we'll do Adha Mukha Virasana to lengthen the lumbar spine. Downward facing hero pose. Feel your sacrum broaden, lower back broaden and lengthen. And as you're ready, raise the head up, walk your hands in and come up to sit. That's it for today. Thanks for joining me. For more in-depth teaching, check out the video library on my website, heatherkitchenyoga.com.au. The link is in the description box below.